it almost gives it away, right? <laughs> we are, of course, going to be hopping in to watch Kiljardi, sick from the world, uh, play the Delhi on the pit. Not really a sieve I see too frequently here. Kind of intrigued to to see why. Like I, you know, I've only watched it once, and I think that was Doubt versus Salami, and Doubt was clearly not warmed up. Like he'd only just started playing AB4 again, and it, I think it really shoe. Um, it's kind of weird that we maybe don't see more of the Delhi here, uh, simply because it's like a free point map where you can easily contest multiple points with early pass aids and outposts. Uh, but maybe the argument is usually the other sieves don't let you. And I have to say in this matchup, like I would expect it to be quite easy to get away with that against the Chinese, considering this is quite the boomy type sieve. But it is being manned by Poppy Paw. Of course, he's only ranked 11th in the world, so that means he's just washed. This is just an easy win, uh, right? No, Puppy Paul kind of goes deep in the tournaments. Kiljardi's still kind of struggling. I'm wondering when we're going to see uh, tournament Kiljardi actually. Like, go for real, go ham, go deep. Because this guy is doing a good job of staying right at the tippy top of the leaderboards. Like, you know, you guys would even know him via the loser account, which we're watching a lot at the moment. There's MJ and there's the Kiljardi account. And, like, he frequently is in the top 30. But it never converts in to performance when it matters. And I'm wondering what it's going to do. And you know what? Maybe this is step one. Maybe we just need to see the Delhi used a different way. Because I think the Delhi is kind of like dead in a lot of people's eyes. We've seen a few people convert it into uh, a somewhat respectable sieve, especially with these kind of second TC into a quick castle timing builds. But usually the thing that they're suffering with is the prolonged feudal. In this matchup, you do have options though, right? Like use the Chinese. If you're allowing them to go for their eco boom, they'll allow you to kind of do whatever. The risk, however, is how quick they escalate into Castle Age and beyond via the Song Dynasty. It actually forces you to kind of play an early point in the game. So we'll see how Loser wants to play this early point in the game. I mean, Kiljardi could just prioritize around Sacred Sight Control, escalate his income at an earlier phase than Puppy Paw is able to get a return for his TC investment because you know, while the Song Dynasty is good, while these Town Center builds are good, they are a delayed return. While going for Sacred Sights is a pretty immediate return, considering you already need Scholars, so you're already building them anyway for tech. Um, all you're doing is converting that resource investment into something to instantly start returning. Poppy Paw. Actually curious to see if he goes for like a Barbican play on one of the Sacred Sites. I doubt it, just simply because right now, with the Imperial Academy being buffed the way it is, with the times being changed with a lot of these civs, um, I feel like Barbican has kind of lost a lot of value unless you're trying to cheese someone out five minutes in, right? Like, I'm going to drop a Barbican in your base. If that's not the case, like, if you're talking anything defensive or mid-map oriented, I feel like a lot of people prefer to go for the Imperial Academy um, simply because now you can build Imperial officials out of it, which means you don't slow down your villager escalation. And that's what we're going to see here. Imperial Academy coming out. Also, make sure that you get enough tax together so that even if you get blocked out your gold early, you don't care. Um, and this is a pretty damn good placement, actually. Right? He got the mill. He's got the mining camp as well as the mining camp next to the stone outcropping. So there will be a lot to tax in this area. The other side. <laughs> Kill Jardy. What up? We're going in for the Tower of the Dub. Tower of Victory, man. I, I mean, I kind of went on a little bit of one of my ramblings on the... EGC about how I think this is the future. This is the way. Some people shake their heads, probably disagree, but I genuinely do believe that this is the next um, the next innovation of the Delhi. I think like the days of Dome of the Faith as just an outright given are dead. Uh, I think it's still situational. There is still value in certain builds, but I actually think Tower of Victory is a decent proposal now. Especially considering when you look forward of Feudal Age, uh, People are always going for House London now, right? Like, the Combat of Defender got nerfed. And it didn't even get nerfed clearly at first. Like, you have to remember what happened there. Like, you still get the discount on stone, but now you have to repair keeps with stone. So it's intrinsically less valuable because it's, it, once it gets counted, like, you're done, right? So, like, relying upon keeps um, as TCs feels more of, like, a double-edged sword now because if someone gets Siege, like, you can't sustain them because you're not getting cheaper repair. Like, it's just costing you the typical price you pay with no upside. And we've seen that keeps have kind of fallen off the side of a cliff in terms of popularity. Usually it's just kind of pocketed sieves or more aggressive keeps that still get utilized. Anything that is relied upon for prolonged periods of time feels worthless. Uh, and as a result, House of Learning just indirectly got buffed. And by doing this, what ends up happening is the, var the value in Tower of Victory is higher because you no longer have this variance gameplay to worry about where, oh sure, well, like I've 
you know, I've built this Tower of Victory, but now I'm going to go for Compound the Defender um, and play into, like, Cavalry. And I'm going to build Elephants. I don't have value anymore. By having Tower of Victory and then heading up into House of Learning, there's more justification to go Mana Arms. And I think another thing that we're going to see in the coming weeks is better usage of the Force March. Still think Force March is critically underrated and critically underused. Such a big boon to your ability to take fights because you get to dictate terms. And on a unit that is now going to be 20% buffed up in terms of attack speed and then have its damage juiced up by an extra three, you can see how valuable the MAAs are going to become as a part of the Delhi Castle plan. Puffy four in the meantime. Did go into the stables, so he's going to start mounting some pressure. I actually like this play. He wants to draw attention back towards Giljardi's base. And Giljardi did go in early for the racks. Logic behind this, of course, is you just went Tower of Victory. You're not going to play Dynamic Force. You're not going to go into stable units because you don't get any value there. And this is an exploitable detail, actually. I think that Poppy Paw did get info on this early on. So he knows about the Tower of Victory, which means that he's got the ability to kind of manipulate flow in mid-map. That's what you get when you go Horseman. And sure, the spearmen are going to count you out, but what it means is actually, for some reason, this is what Poppy Paul is going to probably describe it as, Kiljardi has gone for the turtly functionality of the spearmen build uh, in a matchup where it should be the Chinese player turtling. Now, there is value on the map available, and the main value is going to be that Kiljardi can play towards the sacred sites. One thing I'm a little bit paranoid about for him, though, is A, we talked about the barbecue drop, which we're now going to see on the ball. And then on the north side, this boar is postured towards Kiljardi. So Puppy Paw can play some cheeky shenanigans here where he can actually aggro the boar, pull away, and the spears can be left held in the uh, punishment that is due for whoever poked the boar. I really like this play as well on the board. It just makes so much sense. You're going to inflate your income. This is going to allow you to escalate. You're also at the same time blocking out control from the Delhi. So why I actually quite like the Chinese against the Delhi, especially with the current builds the Delhi take, um, simply because you have this element to your game plan that you're naturally going to build that will naturally hold a sacred site away from your opponent. And we're talking about a sieve that builds up so much quicker as well. So trying to counter it is incredibly difficult. In fact, the only way you can really counter it as a Delhi is if you know which sacred site they're going towards with the Barbican. Otherwise, they just flip to the other side and they always get it up. Okay, we'll be playing that ball now. Looks like he did sacrifice the horseman, but all villagers full health for it. No wheelbarrow just yet, but that'll come down the line. In the meantime, the next part of the strategy, of course, is going to be that secondary TC. Poppy Port has a few options. I think the clearest one is going to be the double deer stack here. Premium value. Mwah, looking plump for it. The alternative is you play north side and you secure your wood line. Um, but I just think the deer is too much of a high value. <laughs> and kill Jardy. I actually love this. He's pushing the deer away. Yes. Yes. Tilt him. <laughs> this is so underrated, actually. Really infuriating for Puppy Pool. Uh, mistake made here by Kiljardi is he hasn't started sniping them. And now he's stuck here too long if he wants to. Like, right now, Puppy Pool could just garrison and kill off the scout. In fact, it's definitely worth doing to idle villagers for a second here. How does that... What? Like, maybe he's distracted. I genuinely feel like this is, this is something you should be doing. Because right now, you're giving all three the, inf the free info over to Kiljardi. Right, you're not making him pay for this. Looks like the repeater crossbow is going to come out to do that, though. Chicken new moving in. Still, he continues to push all the deer away, though. Oh, my God. Dude, this guy is so annoying. I'm actually really enjoying watching Kill Giant at the moment because I think he is just a really annoying player uh, in a good way, in a creative way. Like, he's very early game aggressive focused uh, in, in different ways, right? Like, we're seeing it's really kind of offhanded with the things he's doing to try and poke at, her, at Eco and be annoying. Uh, but we've seen him all in with these kind of early short bow rushes, with these early horseman rushes. I love these type of players because I think actually the current meta does support that play style as well. And someone else I'm a big supporter of is what the Delhi have done here. Kiljardi did go back for the secondary TC. We were talking about this a little bit earlier. I think this is actually the way to make this sieve work. Like the double TC build feels really good. And the whole point of it is like, you know, you're going to escalate towards Castle either way. Once you arrive there, you're now going to have a big enough income uh, because your villager production lines to easily afford any strategy you want. Whether it's mass man arms, mass lances, mass elephants, this better prepares you for the castle age timing. I think that's what feels really awkward about the Delhi right now as well. Is like you're preparing for a castle age timing, 
you kind of always have been if you think about it. Even in the prolonged feudals, your goal was to prepare for Castle Age unlock via Sacred Psych Control. Well, the same thing can be said of this build. Double TC is there to prep you down the line for Castle Age. And that can be incredibly risky against certain civs. I don't think the Chinese is one of them, though. Especially if you consider the Chinese build right now. Like, what do Chinese like to build? Well, if they're going to go for feudal aggression, they go for Chuge Nu. Even past feudal, Chuge Nu seems to feel quite good against the Delhi because of the things they build. But something you can't discount is actually how valuable the new tower elephants are against Chuge Nu. They have so much ranged armor, you can't do anything. Right now, Chuge Nu just can't do anything full stop. Spearman and Horseman overwhelming him here and pushing him back. A bit of poke coming out. Looks like he's going to back up now. He did at least get Sacred Sight Control. Remember that Kiljardi can only get two of these. So he's kind of got everything he needs. But right now, he needs a way of scaling upwards because Poppy Paul, playing as the Chinese, does have a superior economy. He does have a superior villager generation ability via the Song Dynasty. It means that he's much more likely to tech up first, especially when you consider the comparative investment in military forces now. And that's why I love what Kiljardi's doing. He's just carving up the map and he's taking a bigger chunk for himself. He can still raid past this, and that will be his intent. But he wants to make sure there's no sneak through. He wants to make sure that Puppy Paw can't come back and do damage to his own economy. One thing I'm looking for is like Puppy Paw's next move. Obviously, he's going to want Castle Age. Um, it's just a question mark of what you do then, like. Actually, Palace Guard, I think, are still a decent solution against the Delhi, simply because of how late Force March comes into their build. Which means even if they get better mana arms in terms of damage output, which they will with the Tower of Victory alone, even if they don't go for House of Learning for some reason, what they won't have is the ability to choose where and when they fight. It's like Tech Up already coming out for Poppy Paul. Kiljardi only halfway there. This is delaying him pretty heavily, actually. I think that this is the one-up you're looking for, because if you think about actually what Kiljadi's most likely to do now, this is where you start to get countered as the Delhi. Um, because he's went for the Tower of Victory, and he's going to be going towards the Man of Arms, most likely. If he does go for MAA, then Poppy Paw having about a minute, minute and a half of Vige allows him to escalate the Nest of Bees count. Get up to three or four of these Nest of Bees, and you can just wipe the army of the Delhi. The only redeeming quality they have is Horseman. As, it, as we can see, that's in a limited quantity, right? I don't expect a double down into Horseman to come out from Kiljardi. I think he's going to stop. And, oh god, please stop now. No. I am not a fan. I'm sorry, were you expecting me to, oh, hello, Kiljardi, big fan? No, no, I'm not a fan of this. The combat defender. This, this landmark feels like it's fallen off the side of a cliff. Now, there are still builds that can utilize it, but those builds rely on Sacred Sight Control, and you don't have Sacred Sight Control. You also don't have raid capabilities, as you're now going to be pinched on your horseman line. I am only okay with seeing this build if you already have a Sacred Sight tick down beginning. And right now, Kiljadi doesn't. It means that he's sacrificing a lot of extra damage here, Think about what he could be having that right now. He could have mana arms that do about 12 damage by default. He'd be adding in an extra two with the melee upgrades, then an extra three damage with the uh, Hone Blades, up to 17 damage. And then on top of that, you're getting a 20% attack speed buffer. This adds up to quite a lot. Like you're close to 20 damage. You're incredibly powerful at that stage. He sacrificed all that. And now, I don't think he's going to be going for mana arms at all. And the problem I have with this is like, it just gives you the ability to dive as deep as possible for much. And you can shut down all of Poppy Paul's base. Because Poppy Paul, though he has an archery range, he's been typical greedy uh, Chinese, right? He's not gonna rush crossbows. He's gonna mass Chuge Nu because long-term they scale well. And if you've got mana arms, you could have caught him being greedy here. You could have punished him ultimately. Especially with the pace that Poppy Paul's playing at. But as a result of this choice, I mean, it, it just feels like Kiljardi has multiple boxes to tick. He still needs to build an army that can combat Poppy Paul. He then also needs to gather stone to get value out of the compound defenders. And that's too many boxes, considering where Poppy Paul is at. Like, considering what he's built already. Like, the Chuge Nu are going to continue to counter out what you're building. Even the Tower Elephants won't feel good. Like, I said they're not too bad against the Chuge Nu, but, like, it needs mana arms as well. 
The spearmen aren't going to be able to do enough here because they're going to die. Uh, and the point of the tower elephants is like, while tower elephants are kind of good as part of the composition, is now that they're up at seven ranged armor, Chuge Nu can't do more than three damage for a round of attacks. Because you've got seven armor, made that eight now, uh, compared to five damage right now. Pop Paul hasn't even upgraded. The problem, though, is that usually this composition works if you have tower elephants pressuring from forward and then mana arms rushing your opponent behind. Or spear, or, or uh, horseman, rather. Right now, there's neither of these two things for Kiljardi. And it looks like instead he's going towards Lancers. Now, Lancers in theory can be good, but you're carried out by the spears. And also, the amount of production time it takes is a lot longer, as you can see here. 22 compared to 35 seconds. Horseman would just kind of serve you better. So let's think about the positives of what Kiljardi can do here. If he does start massing Lancers, they don't need to fight in the main fight. They can actually wrap around and go after the economy. And I think that should be his number one priority. Because we've reached 15, 16 minutes in the game. This is typically when the Chinese with the 2TC build should be switching to farms, as we can see. Like, you're seeing the berries aren't really that desirable. Um, small deer stacks left. Like, there's not that much left to exploit naturally. So the transition has to come out. So this would be the prime time to strike, but... I've got a bad feeling that Kiljadi has gone full turtle. A few lances coming in from Papa Paul. He's going to gauge the defenses here. And speaking of defenses, despite the fact that Kiljadi has a compound of defenders, he's going to be beaten to the punchline here. The keep is going up, but it's a Chinese keep on the central sacred site. This should force a fight. If Kiljadi gives this over for free, He's forfeiting way too much of the map right now. I'm, I'm just perplexed. I'm still trying to figure out like what the purpose of the compound defender was. Typically, when people go for this landmark choice, they rush towards something the first three minutes of Castle Age. This is a very delayed move by Kiljardi, and it does feel like he hasn't actually utilized the compound defender at all. There's Lancers. I do like this play. We talked about Kiljardi doing this. He's going to find the farm area as well. It's a good place to strike. Village is now being brought down, and Puppy Paw is slow to react here. In fact, Puppy Paw is distracted on the central sacred side. There's a fight going underway. And that means these Lancers are going to get pristine value on the flank. Good maneuver coming out. Cancel on the keep. Puppy Paw a little bit too ambitious. Nesta is now coming out. Chuge Nu standing their ground. The spear's already down. The massman of archers is serving a purpose here. As Puppy Paw is going to be pushed back. Frontline mostly cleaned up. Nesta B's last standing here. And up against the Archers, it could actually turn the fight on its own. Shuge Nu now targeting onto the Tower Elephant. The Elephant needs to get in melee range, but you just see how long this Nest of Bees lasts. One more flurry coming out before it's death. Shuge Nu continue to back up. Elephant is going to be brought down. High price is going to be paid, but the second Nest of Bees, Kiljadi will back away. Happy with what he done elsewhere. Because if you look at the Eco count, although Puppy Paw still has a lead, it should be a much bigger lead. Idle time four, several villagers going down. These Lancers definitely paying for themselves. In the meantime, control set back. Poppy Paul is prevented from dictating what happens in the pit. Farm's now coming out, so Kiljadi is layering himself for long term. How did he do on the relics in the end, actually? We never checked in on that. It looks like he got a grand total of three. Meanwhile, on the other side, Poppy Paul got a grand total of... Where is the... We're going to say one. Okay, he's finally realized. <laughs> Considering Poppy Paul only had a quarter of the map under his true influence, like, that's not bad, actually. Kiljardi, after that fight, are we going to see a switch up? I mean, he gained a lot of ground off the back of what he's pushing. Problem is, you weren't counted at that point. And now Nesta Bees are amassing. So this choice to double down on archers seems good. But the Nesta Bees are unanswered. He needs Springholds. And that's why you see the Siege Workshop now built. Puppy Paul. We'll want to get ahead of that curve. He's only got one Springhold right now. More Nesta Bees coming. And if I'm not mistaken... Are all these Nesta Bees? Yeah, he's got a Siege Workshop. So he should be pushing Springholds. In fact, the approach I prefer is like maybe Normie Nest of Bees and Springles from the clock tower. Just because they're the things that should be trading. So you trade more efficiently. That's not efficient at all. Wraparound coming in though. Kiljardi. Not sleeping on an opportunity here. And a heavy hit into the villages. 
idle time as well. Several going down. Just look at the difference now. Kiljardi has brought it within less than 10 between the two. This is a big turning point. And all the eco north side is shut down for Poppy Paul. He's going to have to fight if he wants to reclaim his territory. He has two choices. Go down the center, force Kiljardi back to base, or address the vanguard on your northern flank. I actually prefer the idea of going aggressive here. I think by drawing Kiljardi home to defend, you're naturally going to get access to your resources again with limited military investment. And all the while, you're pushing towards a win condition instead of reacting towards Kiljardi's. Good stone walls as well from Poppy Paul. Was wondering when this was going to happen. No more raids coming south side means that he can play static comp into the center. North side is still not accessible. And you can see the Lancers are trying to prowl in here, but only two of them are not going to torch through quickly. Now moving forward. Ambitious outpost coming out from Poppy Paul. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, back him off, boy. Way, little, way, way, way too ambitious coming out there. Poppy Paul, all of a sudden, only three villagers ahead. Kiljardi, we're almost at it. Force March is coming out soon. Does he have units that utilize it, though? That's the question. And the answer is really no. Like, archers don't necessarily need it. The thing that he is good for is dodging out Nesta B shots. But that's it. That's the only usage you're getting. Lost from finding decent usage here. Trying to snipe out Trebs. Unable to do so, though. Puppy Port is going to back off for the moment as the keep starts to go up in the center from Kiljardi. Trebs are now sieging in. And all of a sudden, we have got a mosh pit of death in the center. Nesta Bees flurry coming out. Heavy damage on the Tower Elephants. Of course, Nesta Bees, their damage ignores ranged armor. And that's why they're dying so fast. Shugen Nehru also assisting with that. Nesta Bees marching forward and Puppy Port making sure Kiljardi has to march in the opposite direction. Keep unlikely to go up. Nesta Bees damage coming out. Even with textiles, you feel the pain. One more flurry to finish them off. Villagers backing away. It looks like he can't get it up. Elephant goes in in the meantime. Nesta B's repairs are going to be there. And villagers, what? what? Oh no, kill Jardy with a misclick. They're chopping a tree when they should be finishing a keep. And that's going to keep kill Jardy back. Poppy Paul backing off for the moment, but realistically doesn't need to. He could have kept pressing the matter a little here, but with the springs now coming out, kill Jardy recovers and also notices that he never completed the keep. However, with the trebuchet shots coming in and the annoyance of the Nesta Bees, this delay is going to cost him a lot more stone. You see, keep goes up, heavy damage on it. Villages are now in castle range. Poppy Paul will want to back off a little. He needs to respect the Archibald that's built up. Limited Nesta Bees to answer it as well. Spirulish is proving a nuisance. Now, Military Academy is soon on the way. Puppy Port, did he get his hands on it? No. So, production-wise, this is where Kiljardi can take the edge. As long as his eco can hold and sustain it, he can move ahead of him. Puppy Port right now is leveraging a lot more gold. Looks like we might be getting premium conversions coming out, and it looks like it is going to be conversion over into Siege much harder now. Spruels as well as Trebs starting to mass up. Meantime, only two farm clusters. A third one will probably be added soon which stage his food income should vastly exceed that of the delis. For now, Kiljardi will march in. Problem with what's happening here is he doesn't have a win condition still. This sacred site on the south side is blocked out. He can't access it without diverting the entire force. That's problematic because it means the puppy paw can last a lot longer unless Kiljardi can breach fast. And with a keep in his way, that does seem unlikely. of anti siege is now coming. Now coming to deal with Kiljardi. And what the hell is he doing here? Well, you can tell he had no respect for the hand cannons where he should have. Remember, as you can see, these things hit for 52 damage. He just learned that lesson the hard way. Two Springholds for free does not feel good. Now, speaking of the Springholds, they're going to move out to start sniping down Kiljardi and his trebuchets. And his slow reaction is going to cost him dearly. Kiljardi slow to react because he's making his way up to Imperial Age, doing so with the Hissar Academy. And this is an interesting move. We've seen this before. Remember, we watched Doubt versus Core earlier today, where it actually worked out phenomenally well for Doubt. But Poppy Paul makes sure it won't be the case here. He beats him to the punchline. Chinese up into Imperial first, and now, now they get scary because it is going to be the Spirit Way. And with that Spirit Way, 
these Chuge new really come into their own. This is really where you need Maganels. Like, if you are playing the Delhi up against the Chinese like this, you don't build Maganels, you have no answer to the Chuge new. Picking them apart one by one simply isn't an option. Remember, the way that the Spirit Way works now, you don't get the discount directly on building Disney units anymore. But as you can see, not only do you get the research quicker and cheaper, but every time one of them dies, all nearby units not only get an attack speed buff, but heal 20 health over 10 seconds. That's why the Maganel smash is important, because if you can't wipe them out straight away, they're just going to offset the damage. Trev's about to finish that keep. Kiljardi about to finish off the last of his stone. He's got one outcropping remaining, but looks like the rest has been drained here. Still, he cannot keep the castle alive. My, oh my. This is not feeling good right now for Kiljardi. Gets beaten on the tech up. Getting beaten black and blue. His over-reliance on archers might be about to come back to bite him. Especially considering that he's stuck waiting for the upgrade to come through. In fact, I don't even know how long it's going to take. Has he even started yet? He hasn't even started yet. What? What? Oh my goodness. No upgrade coming out. Still five minutes away, hasn't triggered it yet. Meanwhile, Chuge Nu already up in elite status. A heavy counter now to what Kiljardi is serving. Chuge Nu moving in. One goes down and instantly the plus sign comes up over all of them. A push in from the War Elephants, but War Elephants with limited ranged armor means they quickly are going to be brought down. Nesta B splash damage coming out. Kiljardi standing his ground, yet the Chige knew, even though it's a two to one advantage, it doesn't matter. The Nesta Bs, the Siege is the X factor. The Chige knew just a pseudo tank surviving on the front line so long that Kiljardi is going to throw away the entire army. And you can see the impact. This is why you build it. I mentioned it there. The reason you get Chige knew isn't necessarily because they just outright win on DPS. They are actually pretty strong in that regard, though. The real reason is that they are so cheap that this extra 20 health every time one dies across 10 seconds allows you to sustain. It turns you into a pseudo tank. And you just saw the impact of that. Unless you're up against Maganels, this is a remarkable flexi tank unit. I know, right now people are just taking a double look. They just heard what I said, like, what the hell are you on about, KP? For real, do not sleep on this unit. This is the power of the spirit way. This is the way you utilize it. There is no dicey unit cheaper. Now the push in begins. The beginning and the end for Kiljardi. Sacrifice the whole army. Feels like he barely even put a dent into Papi Poor. Sure, you can say he lost all those Chuge new, but when I look at the military right now, it doesn't feel like it's 72 to the 30. A rebuild coming out, and Kiljardi, he needs the Maganels to perform. They're not going to get an opportunity to do so. Puppy Paw, one of the best Maganel shot dodges in the game. Will prove exactly why. Minimum damage on him as hand cannon is and Chuge Nu now pushing in. The counter to the elephants is achieved. He'll stand his ground as the Russian comes out. And remember, once again, those Chuge Nu just meant to last long enough to keep the cavalry at bay. And they'll do exactly that. And sure. You stop Puppy Paw diving in, but keep in mind the trebuchets continue on. Kiljardi has one shot at this. And the issue with that shot is how weak it's going to be when you do not even have veteran horsemen. You heard me correctly. The veteran upgrade is three and a half minutes. Okay, this, no, it's just done. Goose is cooked, mate. Actually, no, the goose isn't cooked. The goose is fried. It's burnt. There's no such thing as fresh frozen here, yet Kiljardi tries to serve it to me. This horse tastes like dog. I, I, I honestly, like, I have no, no hesitation in my mind. This game is done. The keep build up is just the creme de la creme. Naked horseman. Kiljardi, done a lot for him in the early game, won't do much for him now. Hand Cannoneers will stand their ground, wrap around on the trebuchets, but it's a throwaway force and Kiljardi knows it. What's happening in the meantime is a bigger concern to me. Primary TC is blunted. His existence cannot be maintained, not with the keeps here. And sure, the horsemen got their wrap around. They sniped out the siege, but whoop-de-freaking-dude. 
What was the cost? 30 horsemen just like that. And maybe, maybe they trade evenly. If you're lucky. But your luck is running out. Crawling continues. Poppy Ball has to be feeling the confidence because at the end of that fight, he still has 13 hand cannon near standing. And that's really what matters now. Because if you can't get rid of the hand cannon nears, you have no way of fighting. Once more into the breach. Giljardi says, if I can do this two more times, my tech up will be complete. He's still two minutes away with the veterancy. Oh, Lordy. And I wish, I wish I could at least see Armored Beast come out in time. Maybe it'd then be interesting with the extra armor, but it seems impossible. This time, Spearman in the mix now for Poppy Paws. He returns to the previous units. Hand Cannoneers and Chige New starting to reach in. Nesta B's splash coming out. Villagers getting tickled by it. And the horsemen once again go in. However, this time the horsemen have been baited into a trap. Kiljardi is going to lose them so fast. Nest to be saturating onto the keep. It just doesn't matter. This keep protects nothing, Kiljardi. The rest of your landmark to north side. Poppy Paul's going nowhere. Oh, a great attempt by Kiljardi in the early game. Although, as you arrive later on from Castle and Beyond, there's just been so many question marks here. And I think he's done trying to answer them. There is no answer. GG's going to get called. Kiljardi's ambitious build proved to be his undoing. 